Well, hello, friends. I hope you're having a great day today. Hey, I just pray God's greatest blessings on you all day long today. I just believe that God's going to do awesome things in your life from the start of this day to the end of this day. I just believe he's going to do it because that's the kind of God that we serve. It may not always seem like it. He may go down kind of an awkward road to do it from time to time. But let me tell you, victory is always in the mind of the Lord for his people. Well, welcome to Tuesday's edition of Take 5. We are talking about the subject, the process of neglect. We've been talking about this for three weeks now. This thing got kind of big, didn't it? Um, there, there's, a, there's a lot in the Bible that you can learn uh, about this process of neglect. If we would just apply ourselves to it like Solomon tells us to, uh, we could glean a whole lot of truth from this. And I, I really believe that we could see a difference in our lives, especially in the area of spiritual productivity. Um, and that, that's what we're dealing with right now. We're, we're talking about the consequences of spiritual neglect. And, and the first one has to do with that spiritual productivity. It's the, the idea of that spiritual neglect will affect your spiritual productivity. Spiritual neglect will cause you to be spiritually unproductive, as it were, just like that that field that Solomon saw there, that guy had neglected his field. And so it was not productive. There was nettles and thorns and briars and weeds and all kind of things growing in, overgrowing that field. And so it did not produce any fruit that would sustain that man. It did not produce any fruit that would provide for that man and for his family. And so he ends up in a state of poverty simply because he was neglectful. Well, let me tell you, the same thing will happen to you and me if we neglect our spiritual lives and we allow the thorns and the thistles of sin to grow in our life and we don't root that stuff out, it will affect our spiritual productivity and it will cause us uh, to, to find ourselves in a state of spiritual poverty. The thing that we need to focus on is this, this land again, as we compare the, this field and this land to our lives or our heart. The thing about land is that land is going to produce something, either, either good or bad, land is going to produce something. If land is not planted, if it's not cultivated, if it's not cared for, then it's going to produce thorns and thistles and weeds. That's just the natural product of land when left to itself. If you plant seed in it, then well, but still then, even if you plant seed, you have to cultivate it and care for it and you have to keep the weeds pulled out of it or, or they will still come in and overthrow and overgrow that field. Well, the same is true with our spiritual lives. If, if our life is not cultivated, if it's not planted, if it's not cared for, if it's not farmed by the Word of God and the Holy Spirit, then left to itself, our lives are going to produce sinful fruit. That's just as simple as I can put it. That is the natural product of a sinful life, of a life left to itself. The natural product is sin. We looked at a picture of that yesterday, but I want to... Uh, uh, go just a little bit further and see these two ideas, these two concepts, these two natures, as it were, that can um, take charge in the life of a believer. If you neglect to cultivate your life, you will not produce spiritual fruit. That's, that's just it in a nutshell. The Bible says it, it declares it, and we can't escape it. You will produce the fruits of sin and the flesh because that's the natural product of a life without Christ. And Paul defines these two in Galatians. Watch this, Galatians 5. He says, now the practices of the sinful nature are clearly evident. Isn't that what Solomon said? Solomon said, I walked by the field and I saw it. I recognized it. He didn't have to have anybody to tell him. He recognized something was amiss in that field. The practices of the sinful nature are clearly evident. They are sexual immorality, impurity, 
sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, on and on and on and on and on. We don't, I'm not going to take time to read all of that, but it's a list a mile long of heinous sins, and that's the natural product of the flesh. But then he says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. So we see the two different products right there that can come from the life of a believer. I, I hate it, but it is absolutely true that it is possible for a believer to produce the products of the flesh and that is sin and carnality. And it happens when we leave our life to itself and we don't cultivate it in the spirit. If you back up just a few verses, Paul gives us some good insight. He tells us what we're to do. He said, but I say walk habitually in the spirit and you will not carry out the desires of the sinful nature. So if you don't want the thorns and the briars and the sin and the carnality and all of those things to begin to come up and overrun you, he said, we're to walk in the spirit, yield to the Holy Spirit. Now to, now to do that is to put into practice the spiritual disciplines of worship, prayer, study, fasting, self-denial, and all of the other great things of God. It's to put those things into practice. That's how we cultivate a godly life. If our lives are going to produce spiritual fruit, they must be cultivated by the Holy Spirit in the Word of God. And here's the, the key. We are the ones that have to do the work. Nobody can do it for us. We can't have somebody lay hands on us and impart it to us. It can't happen that way. We're the ones that must do the work. And Peter gives us a great picture of that in 2 Peter 1. And again, it's about six or seven verses. And I'm not going to take the time to read all of it, but I am going to read what's important. Listen to this. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life. Did you hear that? Everything that we need to produce spiritual fruit, he has given that to us through our knowledge of him that called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them we may participate in the divine nature. For this very reason, here's where our responsibility comes in. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith. Do you see that word right there? Make every effort to add to your faith. And then he gives a list of godly characteristics there that we're supposed to make every endeavor that we can to add them. That means we cultivate them, we farm them, we plant them, we keep the roots picked out, we nurture them, we water them, we fertilize them with all of the spiritual disciplines that we can find in the scripture. That's how we cause our life to be spiritually productive. If we neglect these things, if we neglect our responsibility, if we're lazy and don't do the work, our life left to itself will become overrun by sin. And that's just not God's plan for his people. Well, hey, hang around with me at least through tomorrow uh, because we're going to talk about this just a little bit more of the work that we've got to do. Hey, it's been good being with you today. I hope you have a great day. I look forward to being with you tomorrow on Wednesday's edition of Take 5. Until then, God bless you and have a great and godly day.